welcome back to another video. Today I actually have some art to unbox. Uh, it's from a package from Scott Cress at uh, Catskill Comics. And um, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it because uh, I've got some, some, some fun stuff to talk about today. Uh, I mean, I think you, know, <laughs> you can let me know later if it was fun to talk about or not. So um, there's the package here. We're going to get this open. And um, so uh, this is from an artist that I have um, purchased stuff from before through Scott. And um, he has been, if, if anyone has been paying attention to Catskill Comics, uh, the site, he's been posting a lot of what this is uh, on his site um, recently. So, and um, yeah, there's a lot, just there's a lot to talk about. I mean, I think, I think. Um, so, all right, let's get this out. A little sneak peek there. It's a little packet of art. Uh, what it is, is a packet of um, color guides from Glenn Whitmore. Glenn Whitmore was the colorist on all of the uh, the Superman titles through the, you know, the kind of the, my heyday uh, of um, Superman comics. The, the uh, you know, right before the death, uh, death of Superman, and then after, um, you know, Reign, uh, Reign of the Superman, um, and then also, you know, even, even after that. So... Uh, that was right when I was I was reading comics. I read all the way up into I talked about that before, uh, probably like '98 uh, when they did the um, the red the red blue Superman red blue split, which is where I kind of kind of bowed out. But um, all right, so what I have is a full issue of of color guides, and the the issue is Adventures of Superman 551. Now, what's interesting about this one is. Uh, it was around a time when I, it's, it's kind of a, a, a tie-in issue to a story called Genesis. And uh, Genesis is not a, a miniseries that I read. Um, I, I read the Superman titles that kind of tied into it, but I never actually read the, um, the, the series itself. Because it was around that time where I, you know, I, I wasn't taking on more, uh, you know, Superman-related uh, miniseries. Or, but, I mean, that was a, that was a, DC, a wider DC um, story, but yeah, that's anyway. It, I, I I didn't read it. I actually, I've never gone back and read it, um, so I have no idea. I can't really talk a lot about it. But what is interesting about this story is it starts out at the uh, the source wall. So um, the source wall is you know at the kind of like the I mean my understanding of the source wall um, is at the like the the end of the universe. It kind of separates the physical world to like the world of the gods and. Um, you know, it's just this 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 thing that separates those those two uh, planes of existence. Um, so there's a disturbance at the source wall, and Superman is is um, sent out there. This is during his um, during the Electric Blue uh, era. So he is sent out to the source wall, um, and and uh, right the issue before this that the, I think it was Superman one twenty eight maybe I could be wrong. Uh, at the end of that, it's revealed that the 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 being that is causing the the disturbance out at the source wall is none other than Cyborg Superman. So um, at this point, he's just called the Cyborg because you know he kind of dropped the you know the Superman moniker because you know why keep that up? Why keep that ruse up? Um, but yeah, so Cyborg Superman was uh, his consciousness was living inside the source wall. And uh, he, he kind of was causing a disturbance to try to lure somebody out there because he was trapped in the source wall. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, of course, it ended up being Superman who was the one who who uh, who showed up. But, yeah, though, in talking about so, so this issue just goes through it, um, it's, it's a it's a good recap of Hank Henshaw's history. And uh, there's some some pages in here that that kind of speak to that um you know what what happens is this little context this little this uh like kind of planetary asteroid type orb is actually a, a part of the source wall that that hank henshaw uh took over and it it kind of represents his consciousness his brain so superman goes in there and he sees these you know kind of memories and uh it's it's hank henshaw's memories so just some of these while we talk about the story and um you know it starts off he sees you know 
memories, and then then uh, Superman makes the connection that that they're actually Hank Henshaw's memories. And this is the one, um, you know, the his origin of as like a um, he was an astronaut that got like inundated inundated with radiation. Um, you know, it was, it was very much a, a a take on the Fantastic Four. Uh, kind of like what would happen if like the Fantastic Four went evil. Um, so so uh, Hank Henshaw, uh, he gained the ability to kind of control machines. Uh, but this is this is the page that that I really also really like. So this shows the history of you know when he first was able to control machines, he took the form of this robot, um, kind of like a, a junk together you know a cobbled together robot um, that that you know he was trying to tell his wife that that. And it was him, it kind of drove her crazy, she died, he left the planet, uh, and then on, the, on his way out of orbit, he stopped in, in the uh, Superman's kind of, uh, his ship is like, uh, the, like the Matrix, the birthing Matrix that he, he arrived to Earth in, and uh, that's, where he, that's, how, that's where he got some of Superman's DNA, and then you see some of the events of, uh, you know, death, or uh, return of Superman, where Superman comes back and defeats him, and then this is him in his like his new, his um his later um, costume. But yeah, I, it just this. <laughs> I I don't buy a lot of color guides, but this one spoke to me because of the the uh, the story context and it's it's um, Tom Grummet art. The uh, inks are by uh, Dennis Rodier. Denis Rodier? I, I'm not sure. I think I would say Dennis, but um, the thing, I, another thing I love about Color Guys is just all of the, uh, you know, handwritten notes on there that kind of, uh, you know, just as Glenn would, like, paint them and then kind of, uh, th this was actually a time when, well, I guess we can jump into this now. So this is a time where coloring in comics was changing. The process was changing. Um, you know, before it was just, you know, actually the coloring process is not something that I am, am, am fully uh, have a, f a firm grasp on. I'll put it that way. Uh, how it was done before, I know that that it was, you know, the 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 colors were Glenn would, would paint the pages, and then, uh, you know, the, you'd have notes on there for reference as to what the colors are, um, and then it would go to, go to publication. But this was a time when. You know the the colors are being transferred to be done uh, digitally, so Glenn still was doing the uh, the hand painted pages, but then he would go in and then do the uh, the coloring on the computer, and that would that was how it was then applied to for the published page. And a lot of times at the, this era, there's a you know it, it's great to see these color guides in this form because to me this is more. Uh, true to Glenn, Glenn's uh, intent and his vision. And it, and it feels more like a classic, uh, classically colored uh, issue. What would happen is when you get into the, the, the digital coloring, there was just, uh, it was a new process. I know uh, Glenn kind of had to, to learn on the fly on how to, how to do the, the, uh, the colors on the computer. And um, to be truthful, it, it didn't always translate um, well. I mean, I think there was some kind of like uh, growing pains as far as the, uh, the, the process and the procedure. Um, and it didn't always come across. Um, and I don't know if it was part of like how it was printed then as well. It's just the colors would sometimes have this um, it's kind of like oversaturated look. And I don't know if it's it was part of, you know, at, at what stage it kind of Alt got altered between the, the initial vision and then the final page, but um, it, they were very, very hit or miss uh, at that that era. Um, and, you know, I, I don't I don't say that to be disrespectful. Um, it's just that you know Glenn's colors, uh, as we had seen them up until that point, defined the the that era. You know, his uh, he had. His colors were the, were the kind of um, creative glue through all of the Superman titles at the time, and at that point there were five. There was a four weekly or four four monthly titles that came out each week, and then there was a quarterly um, Superman: The Man of Tomorrow. So that actually 
would be on the off week. They would <laughs> that would be published. So there was like a Superman comic every week. Um, so so his colors were that that creative uh, connective glue that held them all together, and it was a consistent look. So it was a well defined look. And um, so when it changed, when it went to this kind of uh, a, a digital approach, it was noticeable. It was it was uh, it was jarring uh, because it was it was different. Um, now there, not, that to be said, there were benefits to to uh, the digital coloring because you could do you know different different effects. Like there's some pages on here that are uh, you can tell some areas were left white um, because what it was going to be on the on the published page was like a, like a rainbow effect. So you didn't have to put in each uh, each individual color on that page you just knew okay well once we get to the digital stage we're gonna you know make that um you know a, a, a rainbow look so there are benefits to digital um it's just that there were you know the, the the techniques were not perfected yet um and it just it you know sometimes that would be noticeable you would kind of see it on, on the page where it didn't um you know <laughs> It didn't quite land where I think they wanted it to land, and that's why I, uh, that's why I love seeing these color guides is because it, it it feels more like the original intent, and uh, it feels very familiar. It feels like what the colors had been to that point. So I I, I love I love seeing that. So so yeah. So I definitely don't want no I don't mean to be um, overly critical or disrespectful. It's just it was a, it was a time of 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 uh, some growing pains. I think so. Yeah, a couple more pages here. We'll go through the story is a boom tube and then these these last pages are ones that i really um why this issue really kind of kind of kind of spoke to me as well just because there's all a bunch of dc characters because it's a tie-in issue to that genesis story um you've got a lot of dc characters of you know kind of superman leading this team to deal with whatever the <laughs> whatever the crisis or issue was uh for that story uh this is the the last page of the of the story, but also it's um it's very cool because be, during their encounter, uh, Cyborg Superman, well Cyborg and uh, the Electric Blue Superman, uh, Cyborg was looking for a way to escape, and uh, Superman was like he, he at one point he said you know I'm glad that after he defeated him he said I'm glad you know Henshaw didn't think of to 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 boom into to to to, to uh, transfer his consciousness into the mother box that he was wearing, uh, but what what Cyborg actually did was he attached himself into the the workings the circuitry of Superman's um containment suit. So I thought that was a really cool uh way and then after that uh, Superman returned after the story wraps up he returns to Earth and then uh you know Cyborg escapes uh, from the suit and then he is now then then back on Earth. But yeah, I this like I said I, I don't have a lot of color guides but I, I thought this was a really cool issue. And, and when it comes to color guides and you get an issue, as long as you have, I mean, in my, my view, as long as you can have a couple of really cool images, like I really like this opening uh, double page spread. That's cool, you get, you know, the, and then uh, this one for sure with all the characters, because you even get Steel and um, Superboy is back there, Supergirl, Kyle Rayner. Flash, you know, so there's just a lot of good, good, cool characters with varying colors uh, on there that, um, you know, like I said, they, in my opinion, these look much better in the, uh, the initial painted uh, pages. So uh, I'll get these all in a, in a, in a uh, portfolio and uh, yeah, I like, can flip through them there. Uh, also, what I wanted to do is show, since I don't have a lot of color guides, I figured I would just show the other guides that I do have. Um, the only other issue that I have a, a full issue of is, let me get this out here. Again, it's another electric blue Superman uh, issue, but it's it's Superman 123, which is the debut of his new uh, his new suit. So I have most of the pages in this in this uh, portfolio. Uh, let's get a link. This is where his, his powers are going kind of kind of haywire. Doesn't really know what's going on, and then he goes and see and sees uh, Professor Hamilton, and they devise a way to come up with a containment suit for Superman. He he, he dissolves uh, into pure energy and transfers into the this containment suit, 
And then here's the first first look at him in a physical form in the uh, in the suit. And then of course he flies to uh, Smallville and sees Ma and Pa. And then there's this one. This is the this is the, the main reason why I bought this this issue. Uh, this is the the debut. Actually, it was you know it, it was this way in the in the book, um, but I was like looking at it this way. Uh, this is a, the take on um, the uh, the splash from uh, Burns' Man of Steel uh, series, uh, where Superman's kind of flying away uh, from from the, the the farm, and then um, yeah, actually I. I, I Maybe I'll show that in another video, but I have a, I have a commission that actually is a, a an alternate take on this scene. Um, but yeah, I just I, I just I, I love this image. I've always loved this image. So when the the chance was there to to grab that issue, um, I did mainly to get like I said to get this one. Um, this one is one that that I I keep debating. I um I may frame uh, this one, keep the rest of the issue uh, in the portfolio, but then actually frame this one, and then. Uh, another piece that I have, also Glenn, and I recently took this one to um, to OAX with me and had Dan Jurgen sign it. It's the um, uh, from Superman eighty two. In this, this was the initial um, pass at this big costume reveal, like when Superman uh, finally came back uh, after he defeated Cyborg Superman. In the book, there is a horizontal spread, but uh, this vertical spread is how uh, Dan initially. Uh, drew the piece so but um they loved it i mean it, it, they wanted to see it used so what it was used as a a poster that was included in the uh the collector's edition like a poly bag uh copy of the um that issue and uh so yeah so that's that that's the hand colored uh uh poster and then i have two other pieces that i think are really cool uh and, the, and again, this is just things that 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 Glenn found as he was going through all his his uh, his color guides. It's the um, the Doomsday. Uh, it's uh, Tom Grummet and Brett Breeding. Uh, it's the Doomsday entry for the Who's Who, uh, 1992 uh, DC Who's Who uh, uh, issue. I'm not really an issue. Those are like it was like in a, a binder, I think. But yeah, I just I, this this is an image of Doomsday. I have always loved. I've always loved uh, the way that he did that. Tom did the drew the the half containment suit look on Doomsday. Um, but yeah, so that's that's an image that I've always loved of Doomsday. And here actually, there's an example of you know the the, the call outs for the different colors that were uh, pointing out. You know, for the color uh, separator, I guess to to, to do them process. Um, and then one more here. This is, this is another fun one. Is a cover from that same era. It's the it's the post uh, post return of Superman, and it's the issue that dealt with you know uh, Superboy's place in Metropolis. Uh, now that Superman was back, and uh, so here's one that I I think this one's really funny uh, because you know. So you've got all of these, all of these different color things going on. There, you know, the notes to point out all the colors. And then if you look at Superboy's face, <laughs> there was a, a, uh, I guess they had wrote the code on there, to, uh, to, for his like flesh tone. But then it must have, you know, wasn't able to read it, so they <laughs> had to scribble it out and then write it over to the side. But it looks like you know Superboy has got this, you know, Burt Reynolds type uh, mustache. So. <laughs> So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, um, I really love having like something like this, uh, you know, a, a little example of a lot of different type of, of, of guides. So we've got the cover, that who's who entry, the poster uh, piece, and then, you know, a couple couple full issues, I mean, both of which are, are Electric Blue Superman. But when it comes to color, those are those are fun colored things to have. So um, yeah, I'm really excited that to, to, to add... Um, that this latest issue to the collection. Um, I don't know that I need a, a whole lot more. Um, and and you always, <laughs> I always say that, but then if something else pops up, I'm like, oh, I remember that issue, like vividly, I really want that that certain image. Um, but if you're interested, there are a lot available on CatskillComics.com right now. And uh, do me a favor and go buy some, so I, I, I'm i not tempted. <laughs> but um, there are some like some good issues. Uh, it's got some some Ron Friends art. Most of it's the, the Electric Blue 
and and red uh, era. So if that's that doesn't interest you, then probably you know <laughs> maybe don't go. But um, but there's some really good issues that are um, uh, when Stuart Eminen took over uh, on uh, the Superman titles, and he had some really good Superman Blue um, art. So yeah, uh, it's just a fun way to to get a hold of a piece of comic history. Um, they're not for everybody, and I, I don't recommend everybody get color guides, um, but I find them very interesting. Um, I, I like kind of like a, a, a process junkie. I enjoy seeing uh, those type of things, like the things that were used in the, you know, the production of the comics. Uh, much like, much like the, like that, the, the point of sale standee that I opened recently of Electric Blue and Red Superman. Um, I, they're just things that are like, you know, moment in time. You know, this is people working on creating this comic, um, and then the, the, the standee helped promote the comic. So it's just, it just, it all takes it back to that era. And I, and I, and I really, I really love that. So, um, yeah, there's a look at uh, some color guides, what I have in my collection. And, um, yeah, so thank you for watching this one and I will see you soon.